Sabrina's here. Where's those cameras? Why come the kids don't have the cameras on? Let's turn those cameras on and let's see who's here. You know, everybody got to get the cameras on. Oh, mashallah. Yeah, look at that, your sister. Oh, my God. Look at you, Abe. Look at you, Abe. Look at you, Abe. Looking all cool and, and, and all that. Where's my muscle man and them at? There's mus where's muscle man and then why ain't y'all got y'all cameras on? See the muscles. That's subhanAllah. Okay, we're back. Those of you listening on Facebook, we just watched a movie, uh, a session um, segment number 12 and 13 of the story of Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. And we have some questions for everyone to answer. So I hope you guys were paying attention because I wasn't, you know, I'm a one man band. So I didn't have, so I hope, I hope friends don't know these answers. Okay, so let's take a look at it. We did segment number 12 and 13 of the story of Prophet Yusuf, alayhi salam, and there are some questions. And here's the first question. Let's see who can answer. First question. What characteristics or qualities did Prophet Yusuf show at the palace? What qualities or character did he have that impressed the people at the palace? Let's see. Um, I don't know how Israel does this. How should they be able to see who got their hands up like this? Uh, three hands. Oh, okay, Brother Shuey. Let's hear your answer. What qualities did uh, uh, Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam show at the palace? Brother Shuey? Um, they showed... Uh, they showed characteristics or qualities mean was he trustworthy was he smart was he silly was he mischievous you know what type of characteristics did he, ex he show the people when he was at the palace that impressed him uh, while you're thinking sister Amalia let's hear from you Go ahead, Amalia. I know. Go ahead. Amalia? He showed respect. MashaAllah, the number one thing that impressed the people about Prophet Shuaib was how respectful he was. And uh, subhanAllah, this is something that, is, that, that I'm trying to teach your parents in your parents' class. You know, I don't know if they're going to, you know, but watch when I ask my questions, they ain't going to know no answers. But one of the things that I'm trying to teach your parents is, number one, there's a certain personality that we Muslims have that, 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 that makes you a believer. And one of the qualities of that personality is to be respectable, to be respectable to others. And that's what impressed the people about Prophet uh, Yusuf alayhi salam. He was very respectable. You know, he was extremely respectable in his dealings with others. Okay, let's see. Who else got some more answers? What's another quality he showed at the palace that impressed the people? What do you say, Brother Ejmal? He was a fast learner. Mashallah, fast learner, meaning he was smart. He was very smart, you know, and this is what impressed the people, how he was able to pick up on things real fast. And that's another uh, characteristic that all of us need to work on developing as Muslims. We want to make it part of our personality to be smart and a fast, quick learner. What other qualities uh, did he impress the people with about himself, uh, Sister Zakaria?
Zachariah? It's brother. It, it's brother Zachariah. Oh, brother Zachariah. I'm sorry. Go ahead, sweetheart. I'm sorry. Uh, he was, he was honest. And oh brave. my God. Honest and trustworthy. This is very, very important. You know, there's something that the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam emphasized to us as Muslims. He said, we're all human. We all make mistakes. But one mistake that a Muslim never makes is we never lie. We're always honest. We always admit the truth. We can't it's impossible for us to tell a lie. We can't lie to our parents. We can't lie to anyone. That's the only mistake that we never make. A true believer will never be a liar. Okay, but we can do other things, but now we can't lie. So this is what, and that's how Prophet Yusuf was. He was a true believer. He was so honest and trustworthy. It made the people love him and, and, and fall for him. Well, okay, what's another characteristic uh, that he had uh, that impressed the people. Let's see, Brother Muhammad, go ahead. He was a hard worker. Mashallah, very hard worker. Exactly, he was very hard working and diligent. You know, and this is something that you want to be too, especially, you know, as a Muslim, you know, whatever responsibilities that you are giving, because remember, it's part of the Muslim personality to be responsible. Whatever Allah has entrusted you with, you have to do your best at it. You know, I try to be the best teacher I can be. I try to be the best mother I can be, the best wife I can be, the best friend I can be, the best neighbor I can be, the best sister I can be. So we have to be responsible because on the day of judgment, Allah is going to ask us, those of us who are in positions, you know, he's going to ask us about the people who we were responsible for. And this is what impressed the Kafirs about Prophet Yusuf, alayhi salam. He was not only respectable, he was not only a smart, he was not only honest and trustworthy, but he was also a person that worked hard. He took his job, he took his responsibilities uh, seriously. And you know, that's hard to find even in this day and age. Okay, what else? How else? What's another uh, characteristic? Uh, 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 let's see who didn't answer. Amalia, did you answer? <laughs> Anyone else with another answer? A, a characteristic that he showed that impressed the people? Let's see. I think I got everybody. If I skip somebody, please let me know. Mashallah, good job on that answer. Let's look at question number two. Question number two. How did the people of Egypt feel about Prophet Yusuf? And why did they feel that way about him? How did the people of Egypt uh, uh, look upon him? How did they think? What did they think about him? In other words, what did they think about him? And what made them think that way? Brother Shuaib, go ahead. Brother Shuaib, go ahead. Um. <sighs> Uh, I I um I just uh, I just need to um uh, read it again. Then I'm gonna answer. Okay, um, okay. Take your hand down then, if you don't want to answer. Go take your hand down, Sister Amalia. Uh, how did the people of Egypt feel about Prophet Yusuf, and why did they feel that way? They felt proud, maybe. Why? But um. Because how he's like a fast learner, he already knows everything. Okay, number okay, that's one thing. He they were proud, they were proud to have him as a worker because he took his job. He took his job so seriously. We talked about intentions. The importance of intentions. Whatever job that he had, he took care of his responsibilities because he wanted to impress a law. 
And that's an example of that hadith, you know, Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam, he wanted to impress Allah. So he put his heart in everything he did, which made not only Allah proud of him, but the people proud of him and the people wanted to be around him. Anyone else with any other answers? Uh, how did the people of Egypt feel about Yusuf and why? Anyone else? Let's see. Um, Sister so Sabrina, go ahead. Sister so Sabrina? Can't hear you, sweetheart. You didn't have an answer? Um, they were proud to have him in their country because he was very, very kind and he did something that they never seen. Okay. They also loved the kindness. The kindness that he showed to others. So they felt they, they liked be, so they liked being in his company. They wanted to be in his company. And this is what happens, guys, when you're a good person. When you're a good person, you attract the people. The people want to hang around you. They want to stay around you because you make them feel good. You give them hope. Look at Sister Sabrine. Our sister Sabrine, she's in a hospital. But look at how she's been interacting with you guys. You guys made her feel good today. She joined the kids class and she's been participating here with you all because you all gave her hope. The way you all read that Quran, the way she, she sat there listening to how well ta Sister Tasli met. And how all, and Amali and all the others, how you recited the Quran, you all gave her hope. Hope when she's going through a rough time right now in the hospital, she's alone, she's by herself. But when she heard you all speaking Allah's words, she didn't feel alone anymore. So look at her, she's logged in here and she doesn't want to leave. She wants to stay here. You know, because of the kindness that you all gave her. You remember good deeds, the good deed, the simple fact that you all read the Quran so well. This was a good deed that you did. And it, it, it helped Sister Sabrine. So she wants to stay in your company. She wants to stay around you because of the kindness that you all showed her. Okay, what's another, uh, uh, how else, what's another way the people felt about Prophet Yusuf in Egypt? And why? Yes, see any other answers? Let me see if I got everybody. Brother Hamza, you got an answer? Go ahead. Brother Hamza. Answer uh, like the second question. What is it? I was going to answer the second question. That's the one we're on. Go ahead. How did the people of Egypt feel about Prophet Yusuf and why? Like, they were amazed, like, how he worked so hard. They were amazed by his work. How he worked. Work ethics. Yeah, his work, work ethics. They were amazed at his work ethics. His work ethics were so good. He took his job so serious and was so personable with it. That they, they, it amazed them. Let's see any other answers. Sister Tahira, go ahead. They were inspired by him? Yes, they became in, inspired. He was such a good worker and such a kind person that the people became inspired by him. They wanted to become better too. And this is what happens to us in real life. You know, sometimes we can impact other people to the point where they want to be like us. And that's how it should be as a Muslim. You want to make sure that your behavior, that your personality, that your actions are so good that when you go around other people, they're inspired by you. Dawa. Dawa is not from the tongue. It's by your actions because you're honest, because you're kind because you're respectable, because you're smart. You're teaching the people what Islam is. 
and you are inspiring them to become like you. Girl, you don't look like your grandmother, Tahira. You sitting there making that Fresno look. That's right, baby cakes. That's all about inspiring others to be the best that they can be. Alhamdulillah. Okay, good answers. I'm so proud of you all on that. Now let's look at the next question. Question number three. How did Prophet Yusuf's life turn out to be at Egypt? And who made his life possible like that? What type of life did he live there in Egypt? And who made that lifestyle possible for him? Anybody know the answer? Sister Amalia, go ahead. No, I was thinking. I forgot to okay. look. Yeah, put your hand down. Uh, Brother Ahlam. Brother Ahlam, go ahead. How did Prophet Yusuf life turn out to be in Egypt and who made that life possible for him, Brother Ajman? What type of life did he have and who made it possible? He had a, a, a good life at Egypt and um, Allah, my life. Go ahead, Allah. And then Allah. Allah is the one that made it possible. And how did yeah. Allah make it? How did Allah make it possible? By doing what? By uh, by see. What what did he become? Did he become a certain did he get a certain job, a certain position? Yeah, he got a certain job. What was his job? I think it was uh to give the people food. Yes, Allah made his life good by calling calling the visor or the ruler, the visor to hire him, right? To hire him or to put him in charge, to put him in charge over the food, right? Yeah. Okay, so the vizier, the, the law calls the vizier uh, to put, to make him, uh, give him the position of being in charge over the food. So that shows how Allah is. We should never lose hope. You know, things bad, bad things happen in life, like what happened to him. He got thrown in the well or whatnot, okay? Bad things happen, but we should never lose hope. You know, Allah can turn that bad situation into something good. There's good in everything. The good is he became a very powerful man with a very powerful position in life. And he was able to help others in that position. This can happen to us. You can, Allah can throw you a curve ball, but you make lemonade out of it. You take that ball, shake it up, cut it up and make some lemonade out of it. Put it in a pot and boil it till it becomes something tasty to eat. Hello, it happens. Don't you watch Survivor. You might have to eat a ball. You never know. Life is, does that to you. You know, take some grass, Throw it in a pot with some water, put a little salt in it. Hey, you got you a new meal, a grass soup. Hello. <clears throat> Sell it in the restaurants. Okay. So again, that's how we have to do. We have to take the, the curveballs that Allah throw us in life and, and, and know that there could be something good behind it. And with Yusuf, he became in a position of power. Good job. Let's look at the fourth question. Question number four. What does Prophet Yusuf's sufferings or tests from Allah teach you in life? Seeing what he would happen to him and what he went through and how he handled himself, what do you learn from that? What do you learn from, from in regards to how to handle the bad things in your life? Brother Ajmel, go ahead. I forgot to um, put Fever. down my hand. Oh, Brother Muhammad, what do you learn from, from what he went through that can help you in your life? Allah will always test you, and you can always, call, you can always come back to Allah when you're going through a hardship. Allah will always test you, and what else? You can always come back to Allah when you're going through a hardship. Good job. You learn that Allah will test you, and you can always Get closer to a law from that test. Good job. Good job. Anybody else? What did you learn, Sister Sabrine? Oh, 
Sabrine, are you on? You want got anything to share? Not right now. I'm so sleepy. And then I... <laughs> okay, go to sleep. All right, no problem. <laughs> Sister Sabrina, Sabrina, what do, have you learned from what the his hardship that can help you to deal with yours? Anyone else? Brother Yusef, you have any answers? Amor? Okay, so we learn to be patient. What about patience? We also learn patience. To be patient. When afflicted. With hardships. We also learned that Allah never places a burden upon us that is too great to bear. You know, despite the fact that Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam went through all that, he was able to handle it. And there's something important. When bad things happen to you, understand that you can handle it. If you couldn't handle it, Allah wouldn't have caused it to happen. In other words, you can see yourself out of it. So say, for example, you are walking and you get lost. Instead of panicking, you know, you don't want to panic. Oh, excuse me. Oh, shoot, here comes some big mouth person again. Always got to dip in. Oh, excuse me, I got something to say. It happened to me not too long ago. Sister Layla, I was walking down the street trying to smell my way back home. I was sniffing my way back home. But I end up following another cat scent. It wasn't my scent. It was a neighbor's cat scent. So I ended up lost, Sister Layla. And let me tell you what happened. I was lost, Sister Layla. And I started to get scared. I said, oh my God. I hear dogs barking. I hear coyotes howling. Raccoons are running all over the place. Skunks walking down the street. I said, heck, I'm in Skunksville. I'm in Skunksville. And I started to go crazy, but then I stopped. I said, wait, wait, wait. Allah caused this to happen. He caused me to get lost. So he know I can find my way back home. If I couldn't find my way back home, I wouldn't be lost. So I said, calm down. Say, la ilaha and then sniff. I did this. I started sniffing like this. I closed my eyes and did it even harder. I said, hey, that's kind of cute. I kept doing it. I made my own dance called the sniff dance. And I did it all the way home. I went. And before I knew it, I was back in front of my house. Yep. I was home in front of my house because I knew that Allah wasn't going to put no burden on me that I couldn't handle. Allah knew that I was going to get lost and I could find my way home. He just wanted me to invent the, the sniff dance. So I know that's what I'll do next time I get lost. Thank you for allowing me to share. Sister Layla, you still there? Uh, let me talk to you for a minute. I know you got three cats, but you know, I'm a dude. I can have two, three, four. <laughs> Are you single? I'm on my way to find you. <laughs> Who? 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 
Lord have mercy. He got to go. See, this is why I don't like no males, not even a male cat. I'm telling you, a male is a male is a male. He can take his sniff dance and sniff dance his way on out to that alley he came from. Hello. But he brought up a good point. A law don't place no burden on us that we can't handle. So if you find yourself lost like he was, don't panic. Don't say, oh my God, I'm getting ready to be killed because I'm lost. Just think like he did. <gasps> a law made this happen. But he wouldn't have done that to me if I couldn't handle it. So I'm going to get control. I'm going to think. I'm going to go to the get, walk over there to that gas station and ask them for the directions back home. I'm going to take my time and say, and find my way back home. So we did learn that from that crazy alley cat with his sniff dance. But anyway, so that's what we learned from what happened with Yusef. Allah never puts a burden on us that's too great for us to handle. And that brings us to the next question. This is easy, true or false? Allah is the best of planners. Is that true or false? True. Why, true. Is it true? Why do you guys say it's true? Anyone? Why because is it true? Because he, he's the God, he's, he knows what he's doing. Okay, he knows what he is doing. And well, how else is he the best of players? Go ahead, Tyira. You never know what he has in mind for you. Yeah, because you never know what he has in store for you, just like that silly cat was saying. There's good in everything. The cat invented the new dance called the sniff dance that everybody's doing. Everybody doing, I saw, I saw Beyonce talking about put a ring on it, whoop, whoop, doing a sniff dance. So he invented the new TikTok swift, sniff dance. So you never know what the law has in store for you. He's the best of planners. He plans whatever happens to us in our life. Okay. Excuse me, I'm gonna make so I can okay. log back in. Okay, okay. All right, question number six. What were the priests of the Ayman doing and how did Prophet Yusuf feel about what those priests were doing? Remember while he was there, he saw the priests doing something that they shouldn't have been doing. What were they doing and what did he think about it? Go ahead, Sister Abe. Sister Abe, you got an answer? Tahira, go ahead, sweetheart. What did he see the priest doing and what did he think about it? I forgot to put my head down. Oh, 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 okay. Sister Amalia, what did he see the priest doing? Um, they were fighting. Why were they fighting? About the food. So what were they doing to the food? So they said, one person said that, no, they need this food. I said, no, we don't. They, they start complaining. And then once he realized that, um, they were giving the food to the wrong people, huh? Mm -hmm. And he instead of giving it to the people, they were uh, 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 instead of giving it to instead of giving it to the people, they were giving it to who? To to Pharaoh. Yes, to the yeah. their their so called to their so called gods. And they they start stealing. They exactly. And they were stealing. And so what did he do when he saw them doing that? What did he do as a result, Brother Yusef? When he saw that they were uh, giving their food to so-called gods and stealing the food, what did he do? He, he, said, he said, don't buy. He said, don't fight. Over the food and what else? He was feeling sad because they were fighting. 
Yeah, and he felt and he felt sad. Good job. And he felt sad. Good job. Yeah, he didn't like that. And this is another characteristic of the believer. We don't like to see injustice. Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam didn't like to see that. That was inju uh, unjust of them. He didn't like to see them taking the food and wasting it, spending it on trivial things that don't exist. I got a comment. I want to make a comment. Go ahead. Well, injustice. Allah hates injustice. Allah said injustice will be darkness on the day of judgment. People that went around cheating and stealing and depriving others, Allah's going to drag them by their face and have them thrown in the hellfire. Hello. Ain't that what you say, Sister Layla? That hello. That hello. You know, that cat had the sniff dance. I got the tongue dance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. Hello, Sister Layla. There we go, another jokester. There always has to be a jokester involved. Nobody can come in here and be serious. I gotta deal with y'all's parents who don't know the answers. And now I gotta deal with jokesters coming in here with their bad jokes. But yes, guys, injustice. No believer likes to see other people being treated wrong. And that's what happened. Yusef, alayhi salam, he didn't like to see how the people were starving. And instead of them helping the people, they were wasting the grain on, on and stealing it. So he spoke out against it. And that's what we're supposed to do. Whenever we see injustice or we see things happening that shouldn't happen in life, we have to stand up for the truth. Even if it's going to harm ourselves, stand up for the truth and speak out against it. We learned that from Prophet Yusuf, alayhi salam. And let's look at the last uh, question. Who would Egypt fight against? Who would Egypt fight against? Who did Egypt used to fight against? Who were the Egyptians fighting against? Anybody? Who would Egypt fight against? Go, uh, go ahead, Sister. Um, Oh, I can't see. Sister, Brother Youssef, go ahead. Who would e Egypt fight against? Brother ha Youssef? I forgot about being my hand down. Oh, anybody else now? Go ahead, Brother Ammar. They would fight the priests, like the- Exactly. Real easy answer. They were going to fight against the priests. Why? Because they were stealing their food. Stealing their grains. Which is something that is haram that we shouldn't do. Okay? So, mashallah, you guys did very, very good today. I'm so proud of how well you guys did with the hadith. I'm so proud of how you guys did with the story. Next week, inshallah, Sister Israel will be back. And you won't have to deal with Sister Layla and those bad jokesters that keep coming in here all the time. I don't know where they came from. Picked them up off the street somewhere. The little dog, the little Snoop Dogg wannabe, the little Foxster, you know. You won't have to deal with those people next, those things next week. Because inshallah, Sister Israel be back. But I want you guys to talk to your parents. Tell your parents how disappointed Sister Layla is and how they can't answer no questions, but their children have all the answers. And I want you guys to work hard this week to encourage your parents to do better. Make do it for your parents. Ask a law to keep your parents strong. Ask a law to keep your parents strong upon the dean. And then talk to your parents and say, mom, dad, you guys are going to have to study harder in Sister Layla's class and do better because it makes us look bad. You make us look bad when you don't know the answers, but we know them. 
and we can break them down and explain them better than you can, mom. Let your parents know and can make do for them. Say, and we're going to pray for you, mom, that you can be as smart as we are, inshallah. Okay, I want to thank all y'all for participating. Uh, make sure everybody is here at, uh, for tomorrow. Make sure y'all review the next hadith. So when Sister um, Isra is back next week, you guys will be ready for her. And inshallah, tell your parents I'll see them in the next class. Don't forget for y'all listening on Facebook, six o'clock, we have Riyadh Salahin with Dr. Saeed and then my class. And I got a quiz in my class will be at seven, inshallah. So I'm closing out on Facebook. Thank the kids for joining. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik.